Uh, Coach, uh, can you kind of describe um, what happened there in the second half that he got away? Um, we didn't do a good enough job defending the three-point line. Um, you know, they're a team you know, that shoots the most catch and shoot threes. Uh, they shoot the third most and make the third most threes in the league. And you know, when you're holding a lead like that, uh, that's how they get back in the game. And we allowed them to shoot 44% from the three-point line. Uh, and that was the difference. Other questions? Um, Coach, going down the stretch, when you take Jaron Jackson out of the game, you inserted Dylan Brooks. Just from your perspective, what goes into that decision? Uh, they were small on the floor. And you know, I thought when you were looking at it, it put us in an uncomfortable situation with the matchup. Uh, and being able to switch pick and rolls and try to keep people in front of us so that they weren't getting out to space where they were able to knock down threes. Uh, Marcus Morris was hitting threes. Uh, Horford hit the three. Um, so I was trying to just make sure that our small matchup could switch and keep people in front of us and not give up those open looks. Uh, third quarter has been an issue at times. Uh, what needs to happen just to maintain that energy from the second to the third? Um, I mean, we we got to build that consistency and sustain what we're doing. Um, we've proven that we can do things well. The matter for us is, you know, how often do we do it, and can we continue to do it? And you know, give Boston credit; they're a heck of a basketball team. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they got firepower up and down their roster. Uh, they got shot making up and down their roster. And you know, the three ball changes the game. And, you know, we allowed them to get um, those looks from behind the three point line. Uh, and then on the other end, we weren't able to knock down uh, some of the opportunities we had. And that's the difference. JB, is there a thought to diversify the offense down the stretch away from Mike and Mark in the, in the two man game? I mean, I think, you know, I thought we created open shots out of it. Um, you know, how we get to it is going to be different. We don't do just the same thing every single time. Um, but those two guys put defenses in a bind, and it forces rotations. If those guys don't get shots, um, you know, if they have opportunities, they can make the plays, they can take the shot, uh, they can drive it, you know, they can pass. So um, I don't think that's the issue. JB, how tough of a pill is this one to swallow? It'll hurt. It hurts all of us. They all do. Um, you know, yeah, they, we were, we did, we played well in that first half. There's no doubt about it. Um, but this is a 48-minute game, and you know, we've got to be able to sustain it. Um, you know, again, just making sure that we're doing you know, to the best of our abilities, uh, trying to take away team strengths. Again, 16 three-pointers, you know, 44%. Uh, that's hard to come back. Bounce back night for Dylan Brooks. Uh, just from your view, did it look like he kind of got back to the point where he was at before the MCL spring? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think he got comfortable. Uh, the way the game started for him, he took what was available, uh, was impressing, and allowed the game to come to him. He caught his rhythm that way. Coach, we talked some about the second half struggles, but it, it, it didn't look like your team played poorly in the second half, just not well enough to win. Is that, or was that? Yeah, I don't think we played poorly. Um, you know, I think we were still, no matter how you look at it, you know, in a tight basketball game going down the stretch. Um, there was a huge missed call on a Mike Conley drive uh, that changes the momentum of the game at that point. Um, you know, it's clear as day. Mike Conley drives to the basket. You know, he baits the defender. They slap him on his arm. We don't get the call. They get down uh, and get their opportunity uh, in a broken floor situation. Uh, that call's not missed. You know, the correct call, whether it's a side out or he's in his shot, he makes his free throws. You know, it's a different basketball game for us going down the stretch. So it's not like our guys you know, didn't do uh, what was necessary. We had lapses, obviously. We didn't play perfect. Um, but that's a huge missed call, and 
you know, I think it's been a running theme uh, in the conversations that we've had uh, about the fouls that Mike Conley gets um, that aren't blown. Mike Conley is one of the class acts in the NBA. He deserves the respect uh, of the officials. And time and time again, he drives to the basket, there's contact made, there's no whistle. You know, he doesn't complain, he doesn't get technical fouls, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, he doesn't get the respect that I feel that some of these other guys uh, at his level do. And you know, we've gone through the process of sending in clips and talking to the officiating crew. Uh, we brought it to their attention, um, but nothing's changed. And Mike continues to drive to the basket and continue to get fouled without a whistle. So uh, that's something that we all need to be aware of, but I think he deserves that respect. And he's too classy a guy uh, to show out or disrespect people. Um, he won't do that, but it's our responsibility to make sure we're protecting him and tonight was a classic case of it where the whistle wasn't blown for him in a crucial moment of the game. Anything else? All right, thank you.